Hello, my Matty Baboon. Today, we are going to start something new. We are going to start a new Grim Dawn playthrough. And with the fact that the game is now out on Xbox, we are going to see if it's still worth to play this game and if I still take pleasure playing Grim Dawn. As you can see, I have deleted all my characters as I want to share with you the game from the perspective of a new player. So we are starting from scratch with nothing. That's going to be a lot of fun. For the name, let's create a new character. I am going to roleplay him as a French Baboon. So let's call him like that. Oops, that's a problem when you have a keyboard with a French layout, your A's and Q's get mixed up. I am feeling dangerous today, so I am going to select Hardcore. We are no baboon from the last reign. We ain't a friend of Hardcore. Yes, sir. And here we go, let's start. We paid a heavy price. But the trap worked? You seem surprised. It's been a while since we've had a win. How long will it hold? I've never entrapped a being like this. But the bonds hold. For now. How do we dispose of it? I'm just a witch. You're the soldier. If it bleeds, I can kill it. How do you kill a spirit, though? If you kill the mortal vessel while it's bound, the spirit may perish within. If it escapes... It's listening to us. What are you? Others of your kind name us the Furion. Why have you invaded our world? Your world. We existed first. We were managed by your corrupt gods. Your part opened the way, and now we return to reclaim what my right should be ours. I've heard enough of this rubbish. Let's hang it. Destroy this vessel, and I will find another. I have tasted its desires and emotions. Your kind is weak. You have already lost this war. Do it. Cut him down. What? Are you mad? Better safe than sorry. The spirit has fled. This is a human now. The captain is correct. When they awaken, they won't remember a thing. The ethereal was right. The war is lost. We're a resistance now, and we need every human survivor we can call to our cause. Maybe this one here can still die with some honor. If they ever wake up, send them to me. If they don't, bury them deep with the others. All right, that's a nice start. Two minutes into the game and your French baboon already escaped being hanged. Let's talk to the hangman. Still drawing breath, I see. You're one lucky bastard, I'll give you that. Best go speak to Captain Bourbon right away. He seems to have a plan for you now that we've spared your life. You were possessed, so we uh, strung you up. Seems the spirit fled your body before your life ran out. I'd have left you to hang, but uh, the captain... He sees some purpose in you, and I'm not going to argue. Where can I find the captain then? Up the road, in the courtyard. Don't make me regret cutting you down. I'll be on my way then. What a welcoming old chap that Jarvis. All right, let's zoom out and let's go talk to Captain Bourbon. He's going to be right here. You're not looking too bad for someone just come back from the brink of death. You were taken, possessed by the same creatures that have been animating these zombies here. Normally I'd have burned you with the rest to be safe, but we've lost too many people to the dead. I need someone expendable. Someone with nothing to lose, but a lot to gain. Right now, you are that person. Prove your worth to me, and the survivors of Devil's Crossing may just welcome you. What is it you want me to do? The dead are rising again in some horrible unlife. Corpses don't just get up and move around on their own. Something is reanimating our deceased with ethereal energy. 
We have observed the dead for some time, and they appear to be flooding lower crossing from the burial hill just beyond town. I want you to go to the burial hill, find whatever is controlling these abominations, and destroy it. Where can I find burial hill? Through lower crossing. Once you've crossed the stream on the far side of town, there will be a beaten path leading up to burial hill. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I'd be asking a lot of my people to welcome you with open arms too. Help us in our hour of need, and I will open Devil's Crossing to you. I'll find what's remaining those corpses. So we get our first quest, Waking to Misery, and we can start to walk toward the north. We are going to unturn this corpse to see if there is anything useful for us here. Nice a tonic of mending and hold that pistol. And we are directly going to replace our dagger with that pistol. A tonic of mending is just a HP potion. In this walkthrough, I plan to build a Vitality Ravenous Earth Oppressor. And for those advanced lead baboons watching, I know what you are going to say. But French baboon, a caster oppressor build is not as safe as a sword and shield build. Why are you so foolish? Relax my friends. First of all, I disagree with you, because as a caster we can kite enemies, which is far safer than being melee. And in addition to that, I wanted a beginner friendly and real easy to pilot build. And let's be honest, smelting enemies with 4 eruptions from the ground is going to be a lot of fun. Let's continue. In this house we just got the Francis gun and the Francis knot here. It is an upgrade from the current weapon we have. And this is a guaranteed drop in each playthrough. Alright, so here is how the playthrough is going to work. I am obviously playing hardcore, so the outcome is either going to be two things. Either I am going to die at some point and this series is going to stop right here, right now. Or we are going to continue until I beat all the nemesis in ultimate. We just grab the Heartbuster log here. Each of these books will give you some raw information and XP when you read them. I am just going to consume them and I am not going to read them here with you. French baboons do not know how to read. If you want to learn more about the lore, I encourage you to read them yourself. So we level up. We can now choose a class and as I said earlier I am going to do an oppressor so a necromancer oath keeper combo but our main class is going to be the necromancer so let's pick it first for the first few levels I am going to pick the drain essence skill we will then respect into ravenous earth when we have enough points let's put one point into the mastery bar and two points into drain essence I will put the drain essence on my right click and let's go a few other rules for this playthrough because I want it to be beginner friendly, I'm not going to speedrun. I am going to show you how to complete all the secondary quests. And although I am going to show you most places in the game and also show you a bunch of secret areas, I do not intend to be exhaustive. So there may be some place here and there or some items or all scroll that uh, we do not grab along the way. Here, if you advance next to this tree with all these hanged corpses, there is going to be a boss, Barok the Blue Dig. We are going to drain him to death and he should not be an issue for us. As I said earlier, I'm starting with nothing. I just deleted all my characters and stashes. That means no items, no potions, no components from the previous playthrough. It also means no recipe. Now that we have leveled up, I will put two points in the mastery bar and one point in drain essence. Let's continue toward the north. And in this house, we can grab the two first entries of the Journal of Inquisitor Creed. In terms of format, I'm going to keep each video short, probably between 10 and 20 minutes each. I could make longer episodes, but it is just that I want to find a sustainable pace where I know I can regularly upload videos for you guys. I do not have gloves yet, so let's pick these ones. And we are going to arrive at our first portal very soon. Here it is, the lower crossing rift. We are going straight up toward the burial hill. Here we are going to destroy all the ether crystals. And ping them up. These are useful components that we are going to use later to craft items. Honestly, I do not like Brain Essence at all, and I am going to replace that skill as soon as possible. In general, I hate channeling spells. They are very problematic in the hardcore, as you cannot kite enemies and inflict damage to them at the same time. Let's get that last crystal and farm enemies until we get to level 4. 
And let's go into the burial cave. I am going to add um, two points into the mastery bar. And we have unlocked a transmitter. Transmitters, when enabled, will modify a skill. This one, Grave Chill, is actually interesting. It converts damage to cold and slow enemies, but we don't really care about that. So I'm just going to add another point into Drain Essence so that it does more damage. If we move down here, we are going to meet Kaizog the Reanimator. But before killing him, I'm going to go to the left of the cave to get a few more crystals. Now, as its name implies, Kaiser the Reanimator has the ability to reanimate Walking Dead and Zombies. So, although it should not be too difficult, be mindful to not be surrounded and pushed into a corner. Did you just see that? This is an Ether Bomb. It stays on the ground for a while and it will inflict damage if you walk on that. It will do a good amount of damage, so as soon as it throws that, I am going to move around. In general, in this game, all the spells and skills that stays on the ground or put a mark on the ground did a great amount of damage. And you do want to move out when this happens. Man, this skill drain essence is bad. Handling spell, bad DPS. Finally, he is dead. I am going to grab these magic items on the ground. Let's see what we have. I'm going to equip this impervious leather pants, more armor and more resistance. And from now on, I'm going to start filtering items. At that point in the game, I don't really care about common items anymore. And at some points, we are also going to filter out magic items. But I am going to wait having equipments in all the slots first. In addition to that, in this build, I don't care about two-handed weapons too, so I'm going to filter them out. If we move north, we are going to find our first shrine. Let's destroy these crystals. And who do we level up? I am going to take this skill, Spectral Binding. It's a passive effect that when activated drains a little or energy but boosts us and inflict damage to the enemies around us. But more important, it's linked to the Spectral Wrath. And we are going to take that ASAP as it provides vitality resistance reduction. Going back to the shrine, we will need an Aether Crystal to restore it. And once we have restored it, we unlock a Devotion Point. Devotion Points will let us unlock stars in these constellations. Each stars are going to give us some benefits. And for our build, we are probably going to slowly unlock Ratosh, the Veil Warden, as it will provide us with a lot of vitality damage. And we will also work toward the Dying God for the same reason. As you can see, each constellation has its own affinity requirements. For instance, the Dying Gods has a requirement of 8 Chaos Affinity and 15 Primordial Affinity. And to get Affinity, we need to complete Constellations. Each Constellation is going to give us a combination of Affinity. And to start, we'll have no choice but to start at the Crossroad. It has 5 stars that each will give us 1 Affinity each. And I will probably start with the Eldritch Affinity as I am going to start to unlock the Bad Constellation. It's going to give us a lot of Vitality Damage Improvement. Alright, let's go back to Devil Crossing now. We want to talk to Captain Bourbon, now that we have killed the reanimator. The dead attacks have slowed and their numbers are thinning. I take that as a sign that you've dealt with the source? I have killed the reanimator. The was doing this? Disturbing. Thanks to your efforts, we may yet hold out here a little longer. I've sent word to the gate guard. Speak to him and he should let you in. Take some well-deserved time to rest and recover. Welcome to Devil's Crossing. We Thank need you. Some time to plan our strategy. In the meantime, there are others around Devil's Crossing who could use your help. Take a moment to mingle with your fellow survivors. Kasparov, our resident scientist, is really eager to speak with you. He babbled some nonsense, but I believe he wants to talk about your connection with the Ethereals. Barnabas, our handyman, said he needed help with our water pump. When you're done assisting them, 
Speak with me in my office inside the prison. I will speak to them. As you see here, when we complete a quest, we also get faction reputation points. For the moment, we have only discovered one friendly faction, Devil's Crossing. But as we progress, we are going to discover others. And as we are going to get more reputation with the faction, we are going to unlock new quests and get new items and recipe at the faction vendors. Now that we have completed the first quest, we can enter the Burwich prison. And let me take you through the prison. Let's have a tour of this wonderful and beautiful place. Here we find the Devil's Crossing faction vendor. Because our reputation is too low, we cannot buy anything there yet. But as we become friendly, respected, then honored, and finally revered, we are going to unlock new tiers of items. Let's sell our items. And now, as you can see, some people here have quests for us. So let's go talk to them. I'm sorry to bother you, but if you're headed out toward Whitemire, could you keep an eye out for my brother? His name is Milton. Milton Hart. He was a soldier in the Imperial Army. When we fled Burwich, he volunteered to cover our escape. He always had a pension for Eurics. But it has been weeks and we have not heard from him. I dread to think that he may have become one of the dead. He always wore an amulet I gave him years ago to keep him safe. Now I fear it may be preserving him in undeath. I wish nothing but for my brother to be allowed to rest in peace. Will you do this for me? We last saw each other at the Soldan Hollow in Whitemire, so I'm afraid he's still out there. Sure, ma'am. We are going to help you. Now if we run this way and climb the stairs, we have our stash here. As I have deleted all my saves, this is empty. But if you click here, this part of the stash is shared between all the characters. I also put all my components in the stash. And if we go at the top here, we find Sadina, the trainer. Greetings, child. I am pleased to see that the taint of possession has left you. Should you require it, I offer spiritual guidance to the survivors. I will gladly extend this service to you. Thank you, I would very much appreciate that. She can remove skills points at the modest price of 25 irons per skill. And she can also help us respect devotions, but that's a little more expensive as we need to pay ether crystal to remove devotion points. Let's go take this knot here. And then as Bourbon asks us, we are going to go talk to Barnabas and Kasparov. Kasparov, the mad scientist is here. Welcome to my workshop. I saw you fighting the dead out in Lower Crossing, and I dare say you were absolutely brilliant. Evidently, cutting you off that noose was the best decision the captain made that day. Ah, where are my manners? I'm Kasparov, scientist and inventor. What brings you to my humble shop? The captain said you wanted to speak with me. Rift gates, yes. The ethereals use them to get around. I was working on a way to close them. Then you stumbled through ours. We have never seen a human, possessed or otherwise, pass through one before. Not a living one, anyway. It was then that I realized that we could put these portals to use. There is something about you that is attuned to the rift gates, and I intend to replicate it. Wait, I what? I don't remember anything, do you? I may have taken some liberties while you were out cold. It was just a few tests, a blood sample or two, nothing major. The results were curious. It appears that your body is still teeming with residual aether energies. Don't worry, you won't be growing any new limbs, probably. But I'm going on tangents here. I believe that with a correctly tuned pulse of aether energy, we can replicate this phenomenon in a controlled manner. As in, without the need for pesky possession. I've been working on just the device to do it, but it needs power. For that, I require aether crystal fragments. You'll be looking for large formations of crystals with an unnatural green glow. They are strewn about the landscape now, anywhere the ethereals have left their mark. Shouldn't be too hard to find, especially around places with large concentrations of corpses. I checked the graveyard. Be careful though, those crystals are a bit unstable around the living. What the hell man? And here he is, I just do some experiment on you, nothing major. I told you they'd be cursing as such nice people. Because we were a clever baboon and found crystal along the way, we already have enough to complete the quest.
as you told. How do you feel? Ah, very good. I'm sure a little more aether in your system won't do you the slightest harm. Okay, maybe it was a lot more, but you look fine. Fitter than ever. A real shame about the prototype, though. Showed such promise. Perhaps if I had more friends. Ah, we've been so preoccupied with this Riftgate business that I completely forgot about my apprentice, Starlet. I sent her out to the Burwich Estates to fetch parts for our research, and she's been gone entirely too long. Seems her ineptitude carries beyond just the workstation. I do feel a little responsible for her now that she's my apprentice. Could you please go out there and find that hopeless girl? You feel a little responsible. What an ass. You bet you're responsible. So we level up and we also get one point from the quest. So I'm going to put three points into the mastery bar and one point into drain essence. Let's add one point into spirit. And let's go this way to go talk to Barnabas. send you over? You must have done quite a service with the dead if you've got hands to spare for old Barnabas. Let's get to business, yeah? Our wind pump's broken down again and we're running low on water. We're all out of parts, so I can't fix her up. We can always melt down what weapons we have, but I'm not too fond of being fired in my sleep. I'll need scrap from Lower Crossing. Where can I find it? Search the ruined houses and the old dumping grounds on the far side of Lower Crossing, past the burial hill. Smash some junk, search the bodies of those things roaming around out there. Where you get it isn't that important to you, just that you get it soon. We're running out of drinking water, nothing to be said about ever taking a bath again. I'll get the scrap you need. Unfortunately, we do not have five scraps yet, so we can't do the helping out quest yet. But don't worry, we are going to get scrap as soon as we move along. And finally, before we finish this episode, let's go talk to our old trapped Armon. I hear you have been cleaning up out there in Lower Crossing. If you are going to keep fighting those bastards, you will need better equipment than that. Yeah, see, this killed my Annabelle back when the village was first overrun. Ain't nothing gonna bring her back. And if it tries, I'll put the bullet through its skull. I got nothing left but revenge, so I pay good iron to those willing to put down those abomination. Take Pharos, Gilius, and Negan, for instance. Used to be all good men, defenders of the Empire. Now nothing more than shambling fiends stalking the swamp lands of Whitemire. Put them in the dirt like they ought to be and I'll give you some more iron for my stash. I'd put them down, Harmon. And with that, that's going to be it for today. In the next episode, we are going to take the road to Whitemire. Add a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Grimdown content. And I wish a good day to all my baboons friends. See ya!